Testimony Treasures, Volume 2, Chapter 55, Women to be Gospel Workers The work that has been begun in helping our sisters feel their individual accountability to God is a good and necessary work. Long has it been neglected. The Lord would have us ever urge the worth of the human soul upon those who do not understand its value. And when this work is laid out in clear, simple, definite lines, we may expect that the home duties, instead of being neglected, will be done much more intelligently. If we can arrange to have regular, organized companies instructed intelligently in regard to the part they should act as servants of the Master, our churches will have a vitality that they have long needed. The excellence of the soul that Christ died to save will be appreciated. Our sisters generally have a hard time with their increased families and their unappreciated trials. I have so longed for women who could be educated to help our sisters rise from their discouragement and feel that they could do a work for the Lord. This will bring rays of sunshine into their own lives, which will be reflected into the lives of others. God will bless all who unite in this grand work. Many youth, as well as older sisters, appear shy of religious conversation. They do not appreciate their opportunities. They close the windows of the soul that should be opened heavenward and open their windows wide earthward. But when they see the excellence of the human soul, They will close the windows earthward, which depend on worldly amusements and associations and folly and sin, and will open the windows heavenward to behold spiritual things. The word of God must be their assurance, their hope, their peace. Then they can say, I will receive the light of the Son of Righteousness, that it may shine forth to others. The most successful toilers are those who cheerfully take up the work of serving God in little things. Every human being is to work with his life thread, weaving it into the fabric to help complete the pattern. The work of Christ was largely made up of personal interviews. He had a faithful regard for the one soul audience. From that one soul, the intelligence received was carried to thousands. Training in Helping Others We should educate the youth to help the youth. And as they seek to do this work, they will gain an experience that will qualify them to become consecrated workers in a larger sphere. Thousands of hearts can be reached in the most simple, humble way. The most intellectual, Those who are looked upon and praised as the world's most gifted men and women are often refreshed by the simple words that flow from the heart of one who loves God and who can speak of that love as naturally as the worldling speaks of the things which his mind contemplates and feeds upon. Often, the words well prepared and studied have little influence. But the true, honest words of a son or daughter of God spoken in natural simplicity, will open the door to hearts that have long been locked. The wails of a world's sorrow are heard all around us. Sin is pressing its shadow upon us, and our minds must be ready for every good word and work. We know that we have the presence of Jesus. The sweet influence of His Holy Spirit is teaching and guiding our thoughts leading us to speak words that will cheer and brighten the pathway of others. If we can speak to our sisters often, and instead of saying, Go, lead them ourselves to do as we would do, to feel as we would feel, there would be a growing appreciation of the value of the human soul. We are learners that we may be teachers. This thought must be impressed upon the mind of every church member. We fully believe in church organization, but this is not to prescribe the exact way in which we should work, for not all minds are to be reached by the same methods. Nothing is to be allowed to keep the servant of God from his fellow men. 
The individual believer is to labor for the individual sinner. Each person has his own light to keep burning. And if the heavenly oil is emptied into these lamps through the golden pipes, if the vessels are emptied of self and prepared to receive the holy oil, light will be shed on the sinner's path to some purpose. More light will be shed on the pathway of the wanderer by one such lamp than by a whole procession of torchlights gotten up for show. Personal consecration and sanctification to God will bring better results than the most imposing display. Teach our sisters that their question should be each day, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do this day? Each consecrated vessel will daily have the holy oil emptied into it to be emptied out into other vessels. A LARGE WORK ACCOMPLISHED If the life we live in this world is holy for Christ, it is a life of daily surrender. He has the free will service, and each soul is His own jewel. If we can impress upon our sisters the good which it is in their power to do through Christ, we shall see a large work accomplished. If we can arouse the mind and heart to cooperate with the divine worker, we shall, through the work they may accomplish, gain great victories. But self must be hidden. Christ must appear as the worker. There must be an interchange of taking in and giving out, receiving and imparting. This links us up as laborers together with God. This is the life work of the Christian. He that will lose his life shall find it. The capacity for receiving the holy oil from the two olive trees is increased as the receiver empties that holy oil out of himself in word and action to supply the necessities of other souls. Work, precious, satisfying work, to be constantly receiving and constantly imparting. We need and must have fresh supplies every day. And how many souls we may help by communicating to them. All heaven is waiting for channels through which can be poured the holy oil to be a joy and a blessing to others. I have no fear that any will make blundering work if they will only become one with Christ. If He is abiding with us, we shall work continuously and solidly so that our work will abide. The divine fullness will flow through the consecrated human agent to be given forth to others. The Lord has a work for women as well as men to do. They may accomplish a good work for God if they will first learn in the school of Christ the precious, all-important lesson of meekness. They must not only bear the name of Christ, but possess His Spirit, they must walk even as He walked, purifying their souls from everything that defiles. Then they will be able to benefit others by presenting the all-sufficiency of Jesus. Women may take their places in the work at this crisis, and the Lord will work through them. If they are imbued with a sense of their duty and labor under the influence of the Spirit of God, they will have just the self-possession required for this time. The Savior will reflect upon these self-sacrificing women the light of His countenance, and this will give them a power which will exceed that of men. They can do in families a work that men cannot do, a work that reaches the inner life. They can come close to the hearts of those whom men cannot reach. Their labor is needed. A direct necessity is being met by the work of women who have given themselves to the Lord and are reaching out to help a needy, sin-stricken people. Personal evangelistic work is to be done. The women who take up this work carry the gospel to the homes of the people in the highways and the byways. They read and explain the word to families, praying with them, caring for the sick, relieving their temporal necessities. They present before families and individuals the purifying, transforming influence of the truth. 
They show that the way to find peace and joy is to follow Jesus. All who work for God should have the Martha and the Mary attributes blended, a willingness to minister and a sincere love of the truth. Self and selfishness must be put out of sight. God calls for earnest women workers, workers who are prudent, warm-hearted, tender, and true to principle. He calls for persevering women who will take their minds from self and their personal convenience and will center them on Christ, speaking words of truth, praying with the persons to whom they can obtain access, laboring for the conversion of souls. Oh, what is our excuse, my sisters, that we do not devote all the time possible to searching the Scriptures, making the mind a storehouse of precious things? that we may present them to those who are not interested in the truth. Will our sisters arise to the emergency? Will they work for the Master 